this series is all about uh, people who are fully awake, fully, I don't know if it still means the same thing, but we used to say fully woke, but I, I don't think it actually means that anymore. But fully woke, awake to what God has in us and a people that are fully alive in the power of Christ. And so this series, you know, today, everybody's getting their selfie. In fact, we actually have um, a thing that we do everywhere we go. We always have to get a family selfie. So everybody crowds in and we try to get whatever's behind us, you know, to make sure that we capture the moment. We do a selfie. How many are guilty of the selfie everywhere you go? No, just me. All right. Awesome. This is the world of selfie. I mean, you, it used to be, I feel like when the selfie thing first started, it used to be a thing like if you caught somebody in a selfie, you'd be like, <laughs> look at you taking a selfie. Now it's like normal. Like everybody's like, yeah, we're, of course I'm taking a selfie. Everybody takes a selfie. But this, this series is really a reflection into who you are in Christ and really to come alive to your power. You have power inside of you. Christ is, is in you. When you come to Jesus, you have power inside of you. And so this series really is to bring it to the surface, to come alive, to be your best version of yourself. How many are ready to be the best version of you? I need to be the best version for my family. I need to be the best version for this church. I need the best version for my wife. You need to be the best version for your job, your career, what God has called you to. Some of you are coming in to belong today to jump onto the dream team. You need to be the best version of you for the ministry of Jesus, amen? It's the greatest calling on our life is to make sure that we steward the presence of God in our lives because he's called us to go. So we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 12 today. But we are learning as a community really to create an environment where we're fully in love with God, where our worship times aren't a time where we sing our favorite songs or hit the right keys or hit the right notes, but it really is a collective effort of making sure his heart is full, of making sure, as David said, let my praise be as an offering on the altar that I pour it out not to please anybody else. In fact, you even saw in David's life, he would dance like a crazy person. Everybody actually just pointed at him and said, what is that? Is this not for you? And I would tell you that today, like, yeah, if you come in, you're like, I don't like that song. Well, good. We're not worshiping you. <laughs> we're worshiping God. And whatever pleases him is what we're going to do. And so collectively, we're learning. How do we create an environment where we are fully in love with God? Fully in love. Where he is our first love. And then that love affects the way that we love ourselves. And then how I love me affects the way that I love you. And so that's what we're diving into today. How do we be fully in love with God? Mark chapter 12, verse 28 says one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating because Jesus was talking with the leaders and the religious leaders. And he noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? You can just tell this guy's got a little bit of snootiness to himself, right? 29, verse 29, Jesus responds. He says, the most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, help me out, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Matthew says it differently. He says, all of the laws and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Whoa, this is a big deal. No, what you have to understand is there are 613 laws and commandments in effect. So these religious leaders were studying these laws constantly. It was a full-time job. And they were studying the commandments. And, and this conversation came out of the studying of the commandments. And he asked Jesus, Jesus, which one of the laws, which one of the things we're focusing on is the most important? To kind of be one of those, you know, prove it to see what can be done. Because do you know the religion will always ask what rules and it's always going to look for duty. What's my duty? What do I need to do? What do I need to do to be more holy? What do I need to do to see miracles? What do I need to do to experience the presence of God? What do I need to do? Religion will always ask rules. 
where Jesus will always point to relationship. Jesus will always turn every conversation we have in the church, if we try to get sidetracked, if you listen into the Holy Spirit, listen to Jesus, he will always turn us back to relationship. You see, this man was asking the wrong question. He was coming to Jesus saying, Jesus, which one of the things are we following? Which one of the things are we doing that is the most important? And check this out. This was crazy because Jesus, he answers them higher than what they asked. This man was asking about the commandment. Now the word Jesus responds to him with is very interesting. It's actually a word that is pas, which in Greek is everything. So when the man asked commandment, which was in a perimeter of finite, Jesus responded with an infinite answer, which was everything. The man was asking in the parameter of religion. Jesus was talking in the parameter of life. When Jesus responded, he goes, the most important out of all your life. Uh, excuse me, Jesus, which commandment? And sometimes we can get caught up in that, right? Uh, Lord, what shall I do to be more holy? And Jesus said, actually, the premise of life is this, to love the Lord your God. Aren't you so thankful that Jesus's answer is not based on your question, but is always based on what you need? I'm so thankful Jesus looks past my stupid questions. I'm so thankful Jesus looked past all of my stupid prayers I prayed when I was young. Thank you, Lord. I prayed over way too many un uh, crazy women to be my wife, okay? I prayed way too many, like, Lord, you know that's her. God, I'm in junior high and I know that is the will for my life. I prayed way too many crazy prayers. I prayed things over houses. I prayed things over properties. I prayed things over businesses that we were starting, little things. I actually wanted to start um, a fanny pack company back in the day. And we, I was gonna call it Tush Bump. Don't judge me, don't judge me. I know it's a thing now, but it wasn't a thing when I was trying to start it. And I prayed over that thing. I was like, God, you know, this would be such a cool thing. We could invest in your kingdom and also I prayed some crazy. How many of you have prayed some crazy prayers in your life? I'm so grateful that Jesus doesn't base his answer on our question. He always bases it on what we need. Sometimes when you get something in your life, you're like, whoa, this is a valley. Lord, I prayed for the mountaintop. God, I pray for blessing and you give me curse. God, I pray for this crazy, amazing, and I'm struggling. What? I remember talking to somebody and they were talking about the call of God in their life and they came to school and all, and they're praying over every place to go and God laid Philly on their heart. This is back when we launched, when we first launched. And they came and they were so confused. They're like, God, out of all places, Philadelphia? And it made my mind race back to when uh, my we were on the road traveling and the Lord called my dad to plant a church and we could have gone anywhere. I mean, it was like the world was our oyster, right? It was like, we'd go to Florida or California or somewhere beautiful with beaches, okay? <laughs> That's what it comes down to. And it was like, the Lord really placed Pennsylvania on our hearts for whatever reason. I'm so thankful now seeing the beautiful community and the life changes happening in this city because if God hadn't called us according to his plan for our life and it wasn't according to our thoughts for our life, praise God, Jesus doesn't base his answer on our question. So Jesus answers the man past his question. He sets the groundwork for all Christianity. This is what it's all based on. He says, number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are traveling as a family. And uh, when you're an evangelist, you're going from church to church and you kind of live off of the honorarium offering, right? So you, you know, you sing and preach and minister. We were ministering to people and uh, our whole ministry was for broken families. So we we're ministering to those that uh, had gone through divorce or, or were going through uh, separation. And we were bringing the family back together and really bringing that healing power of Jesus. And it's a beautiful time but in that midst, we had been years down the road and we hadn't had the means to go to the dentist because there was uh, 16 of us. And so you can imagine the bill on 16 people going to the dentist. And so we were praying as a family. We were saying, all right, let's just make this a prayer request. 
we're going to pray to God and just pray that he brings in the funds so that we can go to the dentist, okay? So we're praying over this, miracles. Come on, let's see this. We had the mana jar, right, um, that we had, where we had all our miracles. We're like, we're going to add a toothbrush to that mana jar, right? We're going to get some, some money for the dentist. Well, one day, you know, we've been praying, and, and sometimes you go off and on of remembering your prayers, right? How many have ever done that? We're like, you, you know, praying for something, all of a sudden, it's just like, it's out of your mind. And then in that moment, there was a, a biker couple that came to the front of the service after church. They were all dressed in leather and had all the tattoos and the guy had a big mustache with the curly cues, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he just looked really cool. And he was like, hey, me and my wife are dentists. Wow. We're like, whoa, okay, wasn't expecting that. He was like, and we would love to bless your entire family with dental work. Now, the thing is, we didn't realize it had been so long that we had bridges and cavities and root canals and also, how many know how expensive that can be? Come on, where are my college students at, right? <laughs> you understand? That's not something you budget for is your teeth. And so what we didn't realize is what we were praying for was financial blessing. What God gave us was the ultimate source of what we needed. How many are grateful? He always answers according to your need. And so Jesus, he was answering the man saying, hey, listen, I know you're asking about the commandment. What shall you do? Let me reply to you with the meaning of life, how to be your best version of you. And he gives this to, it, to us uh, because today really, we look through a lot of false filters as a society. I mean, you think of the filters that you look through your life with, and I'll just go off of me. So my life, I was raised with a family who was in church, right? So from the time I can even remember, I was getting saved, right? And baptized and all that stuff. So I was growing up in it. So my filter a lot of times is religious thinking, right? It's, it's, it's church, it's Bible, it's all this stuff. And when I went to college, um, I was very sheltered up until that point. Then I kind of went, you know, whoa, let's go, college time. So I watched everything that I could watch. I, you know, I hung out with everybody, just all the things. Uh, praise God I didn't get into like craziness, but I just, I experienced life. And I remember getting in relationships that were just uh, not the greatest and things like that. Now my filter is those relationships. I can come to you now and try to love you through the filter of the past relationship that I had. And that was one thing that even as you come into a relationship with a you know, significant other, you have to deal with now all the past experience that you've been through, right? It's a false filter. It's things that have happened in the past, or maybe, maybe some of you even come into this church and you've been to a church, or you've been to churches, or you grew up in the church. I know a lot of people that, that grew up with different denominations and backgrounds, and so they come into this church with a filter, with a false filter sometimes, thinking, who's the next person that's going to hurt me? Who's the, the pastor that's going to cheat on and mess up and morally fail? What are the relationships that I have now but are false? It's a false filter. Do you understand? It's a false filter. And all of us have it. We come into life with these false filters. And you can right now, you're going through mine. You're like, I got some false filters, right? I got some things that I, I need Jesus to heal. That's why God, when he answers to the, the question that we all want to know, what's the most important thing? He answers with what we need. And what we need is the healing he provides. Commandments, and Paul says this so well, he says the law brings death, right? If we live by the commandments alone, we're going to die. I mean, if you have kids, and I'll say this for our home, we are very strict as parents, very strict. I mean, there's a lot of things that we believe in, which you will attest. We don't let our kids just run the house, right? There's, there's parameters there for safety, right? For our dog that we got now, we have parameters around little cinnamon because God knows if she had her way, she would be out in the city tooling around. She'd be everywhere. She tried to break out two times, okay? We've caught her, tackled her. So it's a beautiful thing, but she is a crazy person that just wants to go nuts. We have parameters in that. Those parameters keep us safe. And that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to create this place where we are fully alive, but Jesus answers with a life-based answer. And then he goes into the second part, and this is what I want to focus on today. The true love, the true love. First off, 
I want to point out the second part that he says, because I think it's so uh, amazing how he says, he points to the love of ourselves. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, the way you love your neighbor is directly affected by the way you love yourself. If I don't love me, if I got issues and I look in the mirror and I can see all the flaws and I can see all my insecurities, well, guess what? Our relationship is going to suffer because I don't love me. But how do you love yourself? How do you love you? How do you get past all the flaws, past all the things that maybe people spoke over you? And you're like, yeah, that's true. I am terrible at that. I do have that character flaw. And maybe some of you have those false filters of even who you are. But Jesus says the first part answers the second part. So you say, how do I love myself? We have to go back to the beginning where he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength. It's so important that we stop comparing and start claiming Stop comparing with others and start claiming what God has given you. God has given you so much. And if you don't love what you got, then you'll never move on to love others truly as Christ loved you. See, Jesus came and he was so selfless in his love. He showed this example of total selflessness. I mean, nothing was about him. No one was ridiculed more. No one was protested more. We talk about all these protests today. No one was protested more than Jesus Goodness, crucify him. That was the protest. Can you imagine going to that one? Crucify him. Let out the the murderer and let Jesus die instead. I mean, nobody was beaten more than him. And yet Jesus was this selfless example of who we are to truly be as we love others. But it comes to who you are. You got to love what you got. You got to love it. So we're going to start here. We're going to love ourselves. We're going to claim who we are, and we're going to grow who we are. Stop comparing. And I want to encourage you too, because I can fall into this trap. This is one of the dangers of social media, because I, I love social media. It's awesome. You can follow up with friends and stay connected. We've never been so connected to our family as today, just because of Instagram. You know, you're throwing there and you're like, oh my word, they went to the zoo. You know, you text and I'm like, oh my word, you went to the zoo. It's so crazy. The monkeys are awesome. You know, it's like the, the way of connection. If you use it that way, it's beautiful. But the trap is the comparison. It's the trap of comparison. When you start flipping, you see everybody's highlight reel and you start comparing it to your boring, mundane life. You're like, oh, I wish I could go to all those fancy restaurants with the fancy plates and all the meals. Man, I wish I could travel the world and see all those amazing sights. Oh, my life would be so different. And we start comparing instead of claiming our territory that we're at right now, where God has given you. And Jesus was saying, hey, listen, if you can get this, if you can love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, I will give you the love for yourself. It's all about perspective. It's all about focus. I remember when we first started coming into Philly, doing video work, and we'd come into the city, we'd do, you know, some shoots and all, but I remember going back, and Philadelphia was like going overseas when you're in the suburbs, okay? So we lived in Kenneth Square, if y'all don't know, it's like an hour and a half-ish with traffic, uh, but it was funny because whenever we would tell everybody we're going into Philly, they'd be like, you're going all the way to Philly? Like, Philadelphia, Philly. We're like, yeah, 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 we're going to Philly. But it, that's what it felt like. It felt like so far off. I remember the more we came into Philly and the more we saw the city and the more that we saw the need, I remember the moment when God changed our perspective from it being a city to a mission. It's crazy. It's closer you get to God, the closer you get to his heart and the more he breaks you for what breaks his heart the further you stay away from God. And that's why I think Jesus pointed to this as the main ingredient to Christianity, the main ingredient to being the best version of you. Because if you don't love God first, if he doesn't have your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and notice how he, he, he said that because he claimed all of our emotions, right? He claimed our, um, he claimed our heart, which are, is our emotions. He claimed our, our soul, which is our spirit. He claimed our mind, which is our intelligence. He claimed our strength, which is our will. Every part of the commandment was directly connected to every characteristic you have in your personality. 
and he wants it all. But if we don't have this right with God, then we'll never have this right with others. We'll never be able to truly serve our city. And that's why the main mission of this church is to come alive to our purpose so that others can find theirs. It's coming alive to our purpose to love God and love people. To love God fully so that in that love, we are healed. And we start to get a true filter for our lives. How many want to be authentic and genuine? I don't want to fake it. I don't want people to come into this church broken and hurt. And I'm like, oh God, dear Lord, let's have a staff meeting. Talk about how we're going to love this person. I don't want to do that. I want to be so broken for what God's broken for that as soon as I see the need, as soon as I see something hurt, I say, God, oh, let's heal it. Let's mend it, right? What are we called to do as Christians? To bind one another up, right? So they can be healed. I'm called to bind the brokenhearted. What does that mean? To wrap up so you can heal. It's like the cast, right? They wrap it up so it doesn't move so it can heal. Well, sometimes as community, that's what we do. That's what we're called to. We wrap each other up in that love, but that comes from the authentic love of Christ in our lives. Pursuit changes everything. The difference between, because what he was saying is, he was saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. He was, the, the tense he was using wasn't talking about loving, um, loving to. He was talking about loving from. There's a difference. Because the difference between loving from and loving to is the pursuit, right? If you love to, it's a, it's a rule. You have to. What we always tell our kids, say, what do you say? Thank you. Right? It's so ingenuine. What do you say? Thank you. You do. You too, 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 until it becomes a from. Where you're like, wow, thank you. You're raised in that gratefulness, that gratitude. That's what he's saying. When you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with from your soul, from your spirit, when you have relationship with him that's beyond church, beyond what someone else said, beyond secondhand information, If you're going on secondhand information, you're missing the whole point. Jesus said, you got to love him with all from. And when you get that right, then everything else flows from that space. Because now you love yourself. Because when you get to, to know with Christ, this is how, this is the only way I can explain it. When you come to Christ, he takes off the filters that all humanity has put on. So you walk around with filters. And as soon as you come to Christ, he takes off the filters and said, actually, this is who you are. Oh. I am a leader. Oh, I am redeemed. So these, these are the three things I'm, I want to point out. These aren't all of them, but I want to point out some scriptures of how you should see yourself as Christ sees you. Number one, Christ sees you as redeemed. Redeemed. It comes from Ephesians chapter one, verse seven. There's many more scriptures, but this is one that I highlighted. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Hallelujah. You are redeemed. The past cannot move into your future unless you let it. But as soon as Christ forgives you, he says he throws your sin as far as the east is from the west. He he forgets about it. So my question is, why are you remembering it? Why are you holding on to it? The creator of the universe doesn't see fit to remember your sin. So it's time for us to forget about it too, right? It's time for us to move on, to move into this place of being redeemed. Uh, To be redeemed is to be without sin, right? It's to be redeemed from somewhere to somewhere. Can I tell you that God just doesn't save you from, he saves you to. He doesn't just save you from your sin. It's like, oh, you're the past addict. Ah, you're the whatever. No, no, he saves you to your calling. He saves you to your purpose. He saves you to what he's called you to. The second thing is he sees you as chosen. Come on, write that down. You are chosen. John chapter 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask my name, the Father will give you. You are chosen. 
You're chosen. Lord looked through the entire universe and he pointed out you to come and be a part of Change Church. Some of you are jumping onto the Belong team today. I'm so, or you're going to Belong to jump onto the Dream team. We're not the Belong team. Yeah. Anyways, the Change Dream team to be a change maker. Some of you are coming in ministry of Jesus. I mean, this is the, way, the reason you're called, right? It's to minister, to reach people for Jesus. Some of you are going to jump into the creative team and worship team and guest experience. You're going to break down barriers so that people can know Jesus. That is the greatest mission on your life. But it's in this mission that you have to understand, you were chosen for this. You were chosen. It wasn't an accident that you walked through those doors. It wasn't an accident that you got that invite. It wasn't an accident that you saw that social media post. No accidents happened in God's kingdom. You are chosen. You are chosen, hand-selected, hand-picked by God. And the last thing you need to know about yourself is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 verse 13 through 16. This is a good one to renew your mind, to get that that mindset of being fearfully and wonderfully made. David said it good in in verse 13. He says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. There's a great thing to wake up and say over yourself in the morning. Wow, Lord, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful wonderful. Post it on your mirror, look in the mirror and tell yourself, wow, I am wonderful. So lads, that's so arrogant. No, that's what God thinks about you. That's exactly his thoughts over you, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, he took time to knit you together. He took time on you. Why? Because you are wonderful. I'm wonderfully made. I know that full well. Number uh, verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. God chose you, he redeemed you, and he made you fearfully and wonderfully. And there's so much about you so much about your characteristics and your personality that we are just going to unravel and get into as community because that's what we do. We come together and we say, oh, wow, look at that part of you, that part of you that you were actually hiding. Why are we hiding that? It's so amazing. And we'll bring it to the surface and God's going to redeem it and restore it and make it something that you can use as testimony because he always takes a mess and makes a message. He always takes the test and makes a testimony. It's so cliche, but it's so true. When you come to God with your baggage, he shows you it's actually the stuff you need for the journey. Sometimes we can come to him and be like, oh, this baggage. He's like, actually, I want to use that. Don't throw it out. I want to use it. Because God always redeems. You're redeemed. You are chosen, hand-selected, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made for this moment. And so the basis of you loving yourself is the number one, look affectionately at the Father and say, Lord, how can I love you? How can I serve you? How can I get this relationship right? And it's in that he's going to take off those false filters. He's going to take off those false filters so that you can see truly how to love others. I want to pray with those Uh, those of you online, those of you in this room, uh, those of you maybe that haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity today to say yes to Jesus. It's one of the most important things you can do. It's why we as a church exist is so that people know Jesus because it's the walk with him that, that literally is the essence of our life. And so if you, maybe you have been to church or gone through, but you never start a relationship with Jesus, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now to say yes to him. If that's you, would you, if you're online, you can click a button. If you're in this room, would you just raise your hand, just acknowledge, say, I want to say yes to Jesus. Maybe some of you need to get right with Christ. Maybe you've walked away from him. You had a relationship. It was on fire. Maybe some of you have grown cold or gone to something else as your King and Lord. And today you want to make it right. You want to make sure hey, I want to be right with Christ. That's you, just slip up a hand. I want to pray with you today, pray for you and with you. And also those of you, maybe that you feel like the fire of God has gone out in your life where you're not pursuing the things of Christ. I want to pray for that fire to be reignited today. That's you online. I want you to click a button. You in this room, I just raise your hand. I want to pray with you and for you that God would redeem that today, bring you into his, his uh, family as a child of the King. 
Let's pray together. If you would pray this prayer after me, just to accept him as your Lord and Savior, say, Jesus, everybody could help me out because we do life together, right? Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. Thank you for loving me so much that you died on the cross and rose again just for me. I make you Lord of my life and accept complete forgiveness. Now just state this, say, I am redeemed. I am chosen and I am forgiven. My home is heaven because Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Come on, can we make some noise for those who gave their heart to God? Hey, we want to celebrate with you. If you gave your heart to God today, we want to say, reach out to somebody. Let somebody know we want to do life with you. It's not just about a one decision. Now it's a lifetime walking with Christ as you come alive to your purpose in Jesus. Today, uh, I know we're going to move on to brunch, but I want to take a moment and just, uh, just kind of a period on what God did today in our hearts. Uh, for some of us, you know, you might be going through life and maybe some things have happened in your life that you need to have healing for to move forward. I want to just open this time where, yeah, we're going to move into brunch, but if you need to stay around, I'm just going to stick down here for a little bit. We're just going to leave some worship music on. And I want to pray over you. If you need physical healing, you need emotional or spiritual healing, you need something to move on in the fullness of Christ. This series is not about uh, just self-motivation and you gotta just do it yourself. No, I believe the spirit of God is gonna free you to become truly who God created you to be. So I wanna pray over you, okay? That you walk out of here in power. You come in one way, you leave another. This is called change. We're not meeting to sing Kumbaya and feel good. See what you have to understand is the power of Christ came to transform. And when you leave his presence, you leave transformed. And we are changed to make a change.